Hey everybody, Marcy Newman here, your Heart Shift Coach. And here I am at day two talking about peace. I want you to know that I've had lots of conversations today on this subject and more and more I'm convinced that this is exactly where we need to be in terms of the conversations that we're having with each other, but also the conversations we're having with ourselves. There seems to be an attitude that peace is an impossibility and people are looking all around at the unrest that I spoke of yesterday and saying, see, it's impossible. Look at all of the unrest. Well, the truth of the matter is, is that we see whatever we are seeking out. So if I were to look out into the world and to see only unrest, I would have to agree with you. I would have to say there is absolutely no evidence that peace is remotely a possibility. However, I'm also having conversations with people who are withdrawing from what they are seeing in the outside world. And withdrawing not in a disbelief, not in digging their heads into the sand, but in choosing to disconnect from the multitude of stories, one more horrendous than the next, one more traumatizing than the next about what is happening. So they've stopped watching news programs, they've stopped reading newspapers, and they've actually stopped having conversations with other people discussing these things happening. And what they're noticing is that they're starting to feel a little better. Now, they might not be experiencing 100% peace, but what they are experiencing is a little safer, feeling like they don't have to be sitting on the edge of their seats all the time waiting for the next shoe to drop, or fearful that um, they're going to be attacked when they go outside their doors. They've stepped away from the amplification of all of the unrest and they have started to secure for themselves a little energy field that they can feel more comforted in. I'm telling you this and I, and I want to share this with you because if you watched my program yesterday and I spoke about this International Day of Peace coming up on September 21st, you may have heard that and had the same reaction that lots of people had. It's just too much of a leap of faith to even think that we could be celebrating peace on any level in the midst of a world gone mad. But the stories that I heard today are stories of people who are actually preparing an energetic path. And you may say, oh, that's so lofty, or they're just not really connected to what's really happening in the world. But what I want you to know is that everything that you are experiencing is the result of a choice that you're making. Now, you might say, what are you talking about, Marcy? I'm not out there doing this or doing that or causing harm or um, rioting or any of that. How am I creating that? I didn't say that you're creating it. I said that you're creating your experience and there's a completely different aspect of each of those, although they are somewhat connected. When we start to accept that we create our experiences, it sort of calls us to start looking at how that could be happening inside of us. Well, I have to ask you, 
Like, how much unrest are you experiencing right now? Like, do you wake up and you're afraid to start out your day or afraid to turn the news on, but you do it anyway? Are you afraid to open that newspaper, fearful about, you know, the trauma of one more photograph or one more story of man perched against man? Are you afraid to be living your life? If so, it's indicative of unrest within you. And if you are afraid of what you are going to find when you open that newspaper or putting on that news program, if you are fearful of that and you are doing it anyway, you are at war within yourself. And that's how subtle this energy thing is, this whole energy that is insidious in the way that it disempowers us and makes us forget that we do have the ability to create. In fact, we are creating our experience. So you might say, and I've heard this so many times because I'm, I'm going to just be totally transparent here for a moment and tell you that I haven't read a newspaper in probably 20 years. I haven't listened to a news program. Um, and people say to me, well, aren't you afraid you're not going to get the information you need? Well, you need to know this, you need to know that. The truth is, is that any kind of information that I've needed has always come to me. And I didn't have to subscribe to the newspaper. I didn't have to even have television. I don't have television where I'm getting news stations. So you might say that I'm living with my head in the sand, but the truth is I'm very much out here. I'm here with you. And I'm talking about something that's really important to all of us. Because if we truly are creating our experiences by projecting the energy that is within us, then we need to ask, how are we contributing to the energy of the collective? So I know one of the things here on Facebook is that, you know, there are lots of people who are leaving because they can't bear the terrible stories one after another after another. It drains them energetically. There's truth to that. It actually drains your energy because you have to give your energy and focus to that story that has no capacity to feed you the energy that you need in order to feel life enhanced. So everything that we are taking in is meant for that purpose. So if you're going from story to story to story and it is draining you, you're doing the right thing by avoiding those stories. On the other hand, I learned this process from a wonderful friend so many years ago when I was part of this kitchen table spiritual discussion group. My dear friend Barbara um, Hendrickson Hines used to have it at her house and there was this wonderful woman who told us of her practice of reading the newspaper. And we said, well, what do you mean your practice of reading the newspaper? She said, every day I practice reading it. And what are you practicing? I'm practicing being able to love, regardless of what the story is, regardless of who I'm judging as the victim or the perpetrator, or judging how this one should have done that or how that one should have done this. 
She said, so I practice. And so what I'd like to invite you to do is to start to practice on your own. But begin your practice by tuning in to how you are feeling and answering certain questions about what you need in order to come back to your center and be peaceful. It may mean that you'll have to make some changes for a while because the truth is is that you're the one who's responsible for protecting your energy field and you are the one who is responsible for creating everything that you want to experience and so I'm here talking about peace because peace is part of your true nature when you're separate from it you are separate from an enormous part of yourself that is here to support your well-being. And so I want to invite you to really start to cultivate this peace by understanding what it is and understanding that it's your responsibility and that it is within your ability to cultivate. Tomorrow we're going to talk about the commitment that it requires in order to do this. But for today, I want you to just take in even the concept that peace is part of your true nature. It's already there within you. And you can cultivate a relationship with it so that it's there for you. And you can tune into it, tap into it when you need it as a vital force for your well-being. Yesterday I shared my peace pledge with you and I'm sharing it again today because I'm taking this pledge every single day and I hope that you will take it with me. And so as I read it, if it's something that you would like for yourself too, just message me um, or just write below this um, video and let me know that you would like it and we'll get it to you. So here's my pledge. I pledge to extend peace into my circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, cultivating my clear intentions taking personal responsibility and compassionate action. I take the peace pledge and I pass it on to all those that I meet through my peaceful heart. That's my pledge to you. And so I'm wishing you a peaceful day or night, whenever it is that you're seeing this video. And I want you to know that we are clearly in this together and that I will be here every single day this month, helping to cultivate a relationship with peace so that when September 21st comes along, the International Day of Peace, we can celebrate it together regardless of what we are seeing around us. So much love, peace in and peace out.